Victorian real estate shut down. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee. Do you all remember when the art was leaked, emails were leaked from the RBA where they were considering or even just discussing having essentially trading halts or stopping the real estate market, encouraging people and agencies and organizations to stop reporting on prices because they were fearful of a sharp fall, of a sharp decline. Now it came out in the media, they were contacting, well, let's just say friendly journalists to paint it in a particular way, but nevertheless, it didn't materialize. It was shocking, it was frustrating, and it just shows their mentality of market intervention, which isn't surprising, they're a reserve bank. Now, what they were hoping for, what they were dreaming for, has been achieved, essentially, in Victoria. And the Real Estate Institute of Victoria well, they're not too happy about it, about their profession essentially being shut down. Now, remember how remember how we were talking about property market taking a hit? Well, this is one way to stop it from taking a hit, guys. Just shut it all down. Shut it all down. Let's have a look at what the REIV is saying. So, continued restrictions spurs a moratorium ban by real estate agents. So... The Real Estate Institute of Victoria has slammed the Andrews government decision to effectively keep the property market shut down for an uncertain period. The continuation of the ban on inspections means that people who desperately need to buy or lease a property will have to make the decision sight unseen. I mean, are you brave enough to do that? Would you be brave enough to buy a property sight unseen? I'm sure there'll be some people that would, I guess, if you've got a, a whole... You know, raft of properties, or if you're an investor with 20 properties, well, I, that must be the secret, special secret when you buy one property after another, because equity always goes up. We all know that. that. That goes without saying. And you pay interest only on it because it's just the equity that goes up. And then when you sell, it'll be worth even more. Isn't that the magic formula? You just don't even look at the properties. You just buy them. That's it. Because a house is just like a share, you know, completely interchangeable, easy to liquidate. Oh, it isn't? Before the introduction of stage four restrictions, people could visit a property one-on-one -on -one with the agent. Private inspections are done with all safety measures, including requirements for surface cleaning, gloves, masks, contact details, and are 100% supervised. That seems all very reasonable. That seems like a reasonable and sensible approach to allowing a market, a part of the economy, to keep going. Isn't that the type of thing that we want? Well, I guess, no, it isn't. You know, I'm one of these crazy nutters that, that worries about people having jobs and people's livelihoods and the fact that, you know, working can give people purpose or even just having money to buy food. You know, th these crazy out there theories. REIV members took these extensive precautions long before they were recommended by government. See, they're there. There you go including turning on lights and opening cupboards and internal doors prior to the inspection. Of course. <laughs> I'm just thinking about, you don't want people, I'm thinking, why, what's this, so what, do they turn on the lights? whoop de doo But I guess you don't want people touching things. The REIV has criticized the lack of genuine consultation by government with business. That's the thing. They're always talking in their roadmap. You know, we'll consult with government. We'll consult with government. I bet you that, oh, with business. I bet you they talked to their union cronies or the businesses they control and everyone else didn't get a say. Well, what do you reckon? Good old Andrew's government there. The initial consultation we were invited to amounted to a round table of over 35 industries all at one time, meaning only a handful had an opportunity to put their case forward. Oh, that sounds, that sounds like an utter joke. The REIV was stunned to be advised that he had been invited to the wrong meeting. Oh, no. While the REIV had a separate briefing later and provided alternatives and solutions to ensure that people can buy, sell, and lease safe safely, all the suggestions have been ignored. See, this is the thing. This is the thing. The government will have these consultations. They'll have, uh, you know, public engagement, all these things. It's all a complete crock, guys. Most of the time, they can just ignore it. They, they, they just tick a box to say, we've done it, and then they ignore it all. It's not like you have any influence or power. You've, give, you've voted them in. You've given them power. You've given them the authority. Or even it's the, it's the civil servants. 
They're the real ones that wield it all and manipulate the machinations of government. They can just ignore it, guys. It's, it's that simple. I know that can be a bit... That, that's why I advocate for changing of the garden, shifting the Overton window. You, need, you really, really need to clear out all the ideologues out of the public service. And the best way to do that is to significantly reduce it. Really cut government services significantly. That's the only way. And then maybe build it up again or even cut all the dead wood. Because it's, it's, uh, it's... Yeah. Anyway. We'll see. Will there be a political will in that, for that in Australia? Because they'll just ignore everything. So to start, the start for that is to, to get people politically active and to shift the Overton window. That is the start. That is the beginning. That these are steps. It's, you need to. It has to be a long march through the institutions, a long march through the bureaucracy. But I guess independent-minded people who advocate for things like a merit-based civilization and not discriminating against groups for particular reasons, you might not enjoy working in that environment. I don't, let me let me know what you think, guys. Let me know what you think. Or you might might be difficult to even get in there could be like ron swanson that's it you need to fill government with ron swansons the real estate sector has been delivered a double whammy with the extension of the rental uh, moratorium for a further six months while this was not unexpected landlords have virtually no relief while tenants get substantial support with many reduced rental agreements due for renegotiation this month the reiv is advising its members to refuse to negotiate rent, rent reductions forcing every request into the dispute system, a system that has already failed to cope with the caseload. A survey of property managers conducted by the REIV shows that about three quarters of rent, uh, reduced rent agreements have been achieved outside of the dispute system with a backlog of over 4,000 cases. VCAT is not equipped to resolve disputes. The lack of understanding by the Victorian government regarding the operations of the real estate sector is evidenced in almost every facet of the way which it has handled the restrictions and the moratorium. In its efforts to protect the most vulnerable of tenants, the Andrews government has not only caused them long-term harm, but has also allowed many who are not suffering the pandemic-related financial stress to profit from the moratorium. Oh, well, that's, that's what government does. That's what government does. Whenever they try to do something good, they'll always cause long-term harm. Whenever they offer you something, Whenever they offer you a deal, a special thing, a, I don't know, a 3% bloody home loan to get into a house in South Australia, you know, may maybe, maybe you're not in a financial situation to be buying a house just quite yet. Maybe you need to get your finances a bit under control. Maybe you need to learn to live within your means. You know, because the government, they're not your friend, guys. Whenever they try to help you, it's a deal with the devil. You've got to think of the other side. You've got to think of the other side. The REIV is calling on government to allow one-on-one -on -one private appointment inspections of property so that people can physically see the property before they uh, commit to a huge investment. Without inspections, buying and leasing cannot proceed, keeping many people out of appropriate shelter and pushing many vendors and, investor, and investors to the brink. I mean, there's some people that probably have to sell. They don't have a choice. They don't have a choice. They have to sell. And here, here, let's, let's, let's have a look at a few quotes. Because it's interesting how you can see, how I'm seeing, I'm going straight to the sources now more and more, just to the media releases. And you see how they put these articles together. So this is attributed to the CEO, Mr. Gil King. Now that's a real estate name, Gil King, you know. <laughs> that's a real estate name. Private inspections are far safer than going to the supermarket. Well, yeah, he's right there. No one watches me there and wipes down the cornflakes packet that I picked up and returned to the shelf. Oh, that bastard. That, what about what all the, the nutters, you know, that filming themselves doing crazy things? We've seen the and continue to see illegal rent strikes with no consequences. Until balance and common sense is restored. Oh, mate, balance and common sense. Come on. Come on, Gil. You should know that. You, you've got Andrews in charge. Balance and common sense. <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, you reap what you sow, everyone. You shouldn't have voted him in. I, I'm, I'm, frankly, I'm shocked he got in last time. But then again, that's because I was watching, or, you know, looking at all the crime and all the issues that were happening in Victoria. But 
here's the thing. I, I think Andrews might get in again. I think people will lap this up. Well, they, they want to be ruled over. You know, they want an authoritarian figure. And they don't want their, you know, they're willing to sacrifice their liberty because they're scared. So, until balance and common sense is restored, we will embark on a moratorium strike. Let's see how the system copes without our cooperation. What we experienced was the classic example of tick box consultation. That is where you put your case forward, but are not really listened to. The government effectively ticking the boxes that require, that require consultation. There you have it. Exactly. And let's see what President Ms. Lee Kalnan says. We're talking about shelter and making the biggest financial commitment for your lifetime. The government is turning a blind eye to the significance of a property decision in people's lives. It is the government's responsibility to protect tenants, and yet they have abdicated this responsibility and pushed it onto private citizens and create a system that does not work. Well, that's what government does. They take, they take, and they, well, they take off you and they give you responsibility. So, just below is one example of the large number, number of consumers impacted by the ban on inspections. Below is an excerpt from a message of a distressed buyer and a potential seller. So, I'm going to have a shot of coffee and then we'll go through this. Got to start the day with your morning coffee, everyone. On Thursday, the 23rd of July, we bought a new family home. We allowed four months for settlement. Plenty of time, we thought. Within two weeks, we'd appointed an agent and had a timeline for selling our current house, e.g. a few trades required moving out. We see, this is the thing. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's different. For my mother, she was downsizing. She wasn't buying a new family home, so she could take time. She came and lived with us for a couple of months and uh, i think she was surprised how she could handle it with all the kids she was terrified i mean it exhausted her and we gave her a little room but yeah you know people buying before you've sold anyway within two weeks we'd appointed an agent had a timeline for selling her current house a few trades required moving out we had young kids kids baby so we wanted it spotless styled photos and then ready for listing but stage four was announced and trades, styling photos and private inspections, even for vaca vacated properties, all banned. We couldn't list it. We now hear these conditions will be extended. Hence, we will not be able to settle on a new house without selling our current house. Yet did Dan Andrews say he didn't want people not to be able to settle? We cannot have the situation cause default for our industry or for the industry. I'm sure we are just one of many people in our situation who for various reasons must sell. Either they have bought already, have financial pressures. Buyers will not buy a house simply from viewing online. Well, we can't even get a stylist photo taken. We live in Albert Park and the old Victorian houses need inspecting versus an off-the-plan apartment. We're absolutely stuck and the financial uncertainty is killing us. Now nah, you need to inspect apartments as well. You definitely need to inspect apartments, particularly new ones. You need to get in the basement. You need to look for defects. You need to look for water. You need to get in the plant room. Yeah, you need to inspect. Because you're not buying just your apartment. You're buying a commitment to that sinking fund. So we either need the government to allow private inspections as soon as possible, particularly for vacated properties, or be permitted plus allowed all the associated contractors to be permitted, or the government commit to providing free bridging finance to cover the gap in settlement dates caused by the lockdown. At the same time we face this pressure, we also face work earnings pressure due to lockdowns, homeschooling and childcare juggling, all out of control. Again, I apologize for reaching out unknown. We're just struggling so much and feel there's no one to help fight our cause or even provide financial compensation for this situation. So there you can see how this can really screw up people. The government getting involved. I mean, you've got to feel sorry for them. You've got to feel sorry for them. What do you think, everyone? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.